Wow, 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 it's Super Chaos Brothers! That was a, Sean, uh, a Shy Guy voice. Uh, yeah, it's our <laughs> Smash with this podcast. Uh, I thought about doing that as a small <laughs> intro bit uh, a couple hours ago, actually. Uh, I'm Zan Talk. Oh, it's not listener. That's Jono, otherwise known as John, who I constantly say no to. Uh, and we are here to talk about Smash Brothers today, <laughs> as we always do. Oh, <laughs> Hello. Hello. Sometimes I, you I got the bit, it. sometimes I got the bit. Yeah, what would a snippet sound like saying hello? I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Because we... Yeah. I don't... I feel like it would be similar, but maybe maybe like... Like with, uh, like, a, with a sn- I'm thinking Shy Guy, but with Smoker's Lung. <laughs> which is horrifying to think about. And I don't know how to make that sound. <laughs> I don't know how to combine the two. Right, right, right. So I'm not going to. Did that come across in Discord? I just, I just tried. I just tried. Uh, no, it did not. Or like, <clears throat> Sure. Yeah. Sounds like Garfield with a with a ball of zombie stuck in his throat. It does sound like Chris Pratt a little, yeah. The Enigma. He can change his voice in so many unique ways. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the creator of Garfield, whose name I don't remember. Did say recently that he was actually incredibly impressed by Chris Pratt's Garfield, but then to be fair, you're not going to trash talk the 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 actor playing your character in the up in the movie that's about to release. So no, you want to make mean, that money? <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see is what it, he says in five to ten years. Right? Is it is it sad that I, mean, I have not seen a movie? Oh, I've seen one movie in theaters all year long. The second one I may see may very well be the Garfield movie. Have I seen any movie this year? <laughs> Marvel hasn't released anything this year, right? No. Then I don't think I've seen a movie this year. Yeah, I I, um, I saw Perfect Days in, in theaters this year. That's, that's the only thing I've seen. It's a very lovely... Life slice of life show about a traveling Japanese janitor taught many life lessons imparted upon my soul. Um, is this real? Because it sounds like yeah, a Jono joke. Yeah, no, it's a great movie. Okay, it okay. sounds like a Jono joke. It sounds like a Jono joke, but it also sounds like something Jono would watch in the room. I will, get, like I will give it that. Something that, that would be in Project Believe. Oh, well, maybe it will be now. No, that then it's copyright. You can't do that. Uh, no, no, no. Well, you can have a janitor in, in there. Sure, you can have a time-traveling janitor. Yeah. Yeah, why not? It's going to be a time-traveling janitor in the remake now. <laughs> I've, I've written I've written Project Believe recently. How many words? Less than 100. 10? Oh, okay. A whole paragraph. A oh. whole freaking paragraph. There's uh, yeah. something about a walrus. A hundred words doesn't sound as impressive when you realize, no, yeah, that's about a paragraph. <laughs> yeah, how many how many words are there total? That's a good question. Two hundred. I'm writing it in. I'm writing it on my Google Doc, so I don't have to count words on here. Hmm. Hmm. Let's 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 uh, entertain this for a sec. Word counter. 5,342 words. Not that terrible. Okay. When you consider I got what in the book in a decade. 55 paragraphs. <laughs> More or less, probably. <laughs> uh, I'm happy with where it is. I want to make this happen. Maybe, maybe, maybe someday when you finish it, we can do we can do a whole interview thing or something. Yeah, maybe maybe on a separate podcast where all we talk about is what we want to talk about all the time. 
Damn, man, that just sounds like a terrible idea, though. Like, what would you even call that? I have a few ideas. I have a few ideas. Like, who, who um, would even listen to us babble for two hours with no 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 topic? The, the same people who do now, and we just call it Super But Catholic. we have a topic on this show! We, we go off topic quite frequently, like, right now! But we do <laughs> have a topic! There's a reason we are here, and what somebody, I'm sure, is yelling at us to get on with. <laughs> it might be yeah, get into this crazy episode of Smash or Dash. Um, true enough, but you know, I, I feel like there are enough people lis- listening to us because they love us. I don't. And they love us hmm. talking about different things. They love us more than we love ourselves, which is not a very high bar, but they do. Yeah, it's really not. It's it, it's like the impossible limbo. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe an ant can under get that bar maybe <laughs> that could be a topic on on this theoretical podcast that you're making. i know i'm not i'm not having a therapy session with you no i refuse <laughs> <laughs> nor with anyone i would i would imagine um oh that, my saying. parents tried years ago it did not last i was just like why am i even here By, by revealing that fact, we are inadvertently starting. <laughs> what? Inadvertently, the, the, it's inadvertently the tip of our own therapy session. Um, I no. No, it's it's just a fun. It's a fact globule. Uh, we can call the show Lister the show Listerthun. You're gonna say that title again? Listerthun. You know Jonathan Lister combined. Don't give shippers any ideas. Zantano. That is our private Discord channel. Yep. Where we... John talk. Because we John talk, talk about too many things and topics yeah. were getting lost. We're like, okay, we're just going to have a, th- a channel of our own with multiple threads so that we can jump right. topics. Right. Um, That's how the podcast was born. Bromter. No, absolutely not. We are moving on from this bit onto a new bit, or hopefully not a bit. I don't know. Gister. Absolutely not! I ban it! I ban it straight to hell! Which is where I wish I could go right now if it would get me away from this conversation. Truck Coon, where are you? <laughs> it's, not any, it's not here, unfortunately. It'd be impressive now to out in the basement, <laughs> but... We can't get any lower than that. Now we can move on. Woo! Okay. Yeah. Uh, if we can both agree that we're moving on, that is actually a shock. I am in awe. Let's do some rate their chances. Oh, wait. We have a theme this episode. We have a theme. <laughs> it, we, we have a theme. Uh, so this theme, we teased it uh, in, the, in the last episode like we usually do. This theme is about our childhoods. And not, no, not, it's not therapy! Fuck! We're not getting on the couch and telling the doctor how our childhoods were. God damn it! No! Shit! (laughs) Fuck. We're talking about the games we played in our childhoods. In some cases, the games of our origin, or maybe games that we played a few years in. Some of the best, probably the best, memories of my childhood were playing video games. Oftentimes with my dearest friends. I played video games with also, my grandmother. Alone. She's dead now. All my back there. Are dead. Fuck! All my, grand- all my grandparents are dead. You- really interesting. The... The the, the uh, you only don't half of mine are. Black. Really? Well, hold on. Do you count? Do you count the parents of your step parents as your grandparents in this scenario? Well, I, I count my step grandfather. So yes. Okay, in that case, there are more alive than dead. Only okay three are dead. I think in that case. In in my case, Is all five dead? of them are. Or do we just not talk to him anymore? Is he dead? I can't remember 
if step grandma's yeah. ex husband is dead or not. I just know that nobody mm-hmm. talks to him. I'm guessing he's he might be dead. Because nobody Let's talks write him a letter. Him. Write him a letter and see if he writes back. I wasn't really close with him. I don't think I'm gonna do that. Well, you don't have to be close to someone to wonder if they're dead. I mean, yeah, but I don't care. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I don't care. Sometimes I wait. Wonder. Hold on, hold on. Another stipulated question before we move on and get to the actual point. What okay, if? Okay. What it? Oh no, that wouldn't be grandparent. Never mind. Nope. Never mind. That doesn't count. I, I don't count my gra- my grandparents from the multiverse. I have not met them. No, I was going to ask about uh, my mother's uh, boyfriend who was like, who who died recently. I was like, wait, does that count? Like, no, no, no. He wasn't a grandparent. He was old, but he wasn't a grandparent. I, I got that mixed up in my head. Like no, I would. Right. Absolutely. His dead. parents would be. I would. Yeah. Assume. Yeah. yeah. If anything, that would be. I never met a him. Stepfather, ish. But yeah. not really because they weren't married. Nope. Or, just... Yeah. Yeah. Or were no. they together for long? Oh uh, yeah, actually. Okay. Yeah. Not step grandpa though. Yeah, so it doesn't need yeah. at least ten yeah. years, I think. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so that's know. that's significant. Okay. Anyways, games from our childhood, characters that we enjoyed. Uh <clears throat> Some of them were from the first games that we played. Some of them were from games we maybe played five years later. But it was still childhood. It counts. Uh, there were a couple characters right. that... like Because you and I uh, submit our own list of what characters we want to talk about from our own childhood in this episode. And a couple characters were on both of our lists. Like, okay, uh, we need another character or two now. Because now mm-hmm. we don't have enough characters. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, but I think there's only two or three characters that I think actually fall into that. <laughs> All of them? All right, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, Red the Chances is first, though. And our, our first character is one that is specifically from your childhood. So I figured yeah. we'd have you talk about them. Uh, you'd have, you should have the initial talk here. Uh, so, Jonathan, why don't you tell me about Hector from Fire Emblem yes. Blazing Blade and Binding That's the right one. Well, no, yep. Blazing Sword yep. and Binding Blade. Blazing Blade. Yeah, there you go. Blazing Sword. One of them um, he's old. One of them he's he Americans actually know him from. Yes, yes, yeah. He he was cool. He was, um, he was the cool lord in that game, and people loved him. Ho ho. Um, yeah. Funny, fun, funny enough. Funnily enough, uh, outside of melee, I mean, that, most Westerners of of a certain age, anyway, nowadays. Um, you know, twenty some odd years ago, our our first experience with Fire Emblem was probably melee, with with Mars and Roy, um, you know, and, and the decision that was made by Soccer and Nintendo to keep them in in the Western localization of the game, which is a great thing because cutting characters, no matter the reason, is bad. Yeah. Um, that is just weird. Um, flash forward a few a couple more years though, two thousand four, uh, Fire Emblem Seven is localized in the West as Fire Emblem. Uh, my first experience with this game, funnily enough, was less than a week after my house caught on fire and burnt to the floor. So it's kind of ironic. I was playing Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem, at that point. You found the Fire so, yeah, Emblem. They, yeah. They, I, I was the Fire Emblem at that time. People knew me because my house got on fire. All the same, um, that that was my introduction to Fire Emblem. I, I had a really cool Game Boy Advance, gifted to me by, by my parents, you know, to, to kind of suffocate some of the trauma of, of having the house burned down as a 10-year-old. And I still have this NES Game Boy Advance. Nice. SP, um, even. SP. Um, which I played Fire Emblem on. Anyway, Hector is the Lord of Ostia, uh, one of the, the many countries in, in this game. And he's one of three lords that, that you play as, the others being Young Wood and Windus, of course. Uh, Hector is the Axe Boy. 
he is he is the blue haired protagonist, but he's this burly, macho, surly fella who kind of throws his weight around with an axe. And he is pretty cool. So um, you know, the, the benefit Hector is like mid upper mid tier on the pool of Fire Emblem characters that Smash fans constantly talk about. You know, there's he's not in the same tier as Sigurd or Ephraim, but he's you know, he's has a respectable position that someone does often talk about for the reason of being an axe user and being unique amongst the many sort you know, the many Marths. Yeah. The many Marths. When people talk about potential axe character stats in Smash, uh, until recently, Hector was like the only one being talked about. Edelgard is the only other character that's come into play. It's like theoretically, I guess Camilla would be the third tier, but generally speaking, Are... people say Hector or Edelgard. Yeah, yeah, Minerva possibly, but that'd be my few. Um... Very. <laughs> so Hector's chances. They were better in previous generations, I would say. But they may not be horrible. What do, what do you think? Uh, well, I mean, well, first of all, um, I also had a... I don't know if I was used the word interesting origin with uh, this Fire Emblem game. Because I actually did play... This was the first Fire Emblem game I played as well. Uh, except the copy of it I had, the save didn't mm -hmm. work. So I was not, I could save my game, but as soon as I turned the Game Boy off and reloaded it, I had to start over again. So I never met Hector. I never met Elwood. <laughs> uh, I was stuck in Lynn's chapters forever. Uh, and then I gave up because, like, what's the point of me playing if I can't save the game, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to learn about the Marth and the Roy, and I was told no. Until Radiant Dawn, and I played that one, and that's a different history. But Hector, <laughs> um, I think it's comp a little complicated. If Sakurai were to specifically go into Smash picking characters and says, I want an axe wielder, mm -hmm. then I think Hector has good chances. But if that's not where the conversation starts, then honestly, I don't think his chances are great at all. And I don't know, I, I feel like his chances would have only have been good for a brawl. I think that's the only time he would have had good chances. Obviously, he didn't exist in Melee yet. And I think by the time of Smash 4, I think it was just too late for him. In Brawl, you lose to Ike as the, the new hotness, and they both of them would have been the heavier characters with big weapons. And Ike right. trumps that being with the recency. So I don't I don't I honestly don't think Hector has ever had good chances. I don't think that has changed. Maybe if Itagard was in the picture, but even then it's been years since Three Houses. We're on to um Engage now. But Engage is weird because I don't think we're I'm I'm actually saying I don't think we'll get a Lear as the next Fire Emblem character, even mm -hmm. if a new Fire Emblem game doesn't release between now and the next Smash. I just don't see that one happening. I think it's too much. And but I think if, if unless unless he specifically says I want an X user, I don't like a sector because even if you go if you, if you're going to go back and pick Alexi catch, which if you're not doing Aldir, that's what you pretty much have to do. I don't think if you look at Hector, I think you're more likely to look at Lynn, or Sigurd, right. or Celica, or um, Sita. Mm -hmm. Forever. Yeah, I I think you know there there are many there, there there are a blend of different routes that you can take with the next Fire Emblem character. Let's say Engage is the most recent Fire Emblem. I which I unless Smash is being developed now under a nose, I don't think that's very likely. We'll probably have a Fire one of the often rumored Fire Emblem remakes at that time or something that will yeah. have a certain character's chances. I mean, supposedly but, um, the genealogy remake has been done for years, and Nintendo is just pulling a Nintendo and sitting on it for some stupid reason. Cons considering that was exactly the case with Engage, I believe it. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank goodness too, because that that is not a game that pulls its punches with the story like Engage does, um, or with the characters rather. Um, even if we went for an engaged character. There, There is reason enough to not have it be a Lear with it being Marth on Marth. 
I would, there, I would go are, for either Ivy or Yunaka. I was gonna say, yeah, there there are a number of popular characters from from Engage. I would actually say probably Ivy. Yeah, I think probably she's the Ivy. Best, most likely. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, either her or maybe an offshot of again Yunaka because she's popular or, or one of the more uh, Lord adjacent characters. Um, I, it's it's been long enough. I don't remember the the the, the red haired dude that everybody. The amount. He's. Yeah, the MI. He, he probably, probably not. would have the best chance, but then again, he's another redhead with a big sword. It's like, all right, right. as far as Smash is concerned, right. this is Roy plus Ike. Right. Al Chris is popular. I'm personally mm-hmm. a fan, but he's popular and he's a bow user, so that's an idea. Yeah, 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 for sure. But um, all of that to say, um, yeah, Hector's chances aren't great. He's 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 in direct contention with Lynn and Ephraim. And the GDA category, which yeah, those are two of the heaviest hitters around. And if Ike did not exist at the time, when would have been playable? And despite uh, Hector's popularity, the reason why I'm putting <clears> him <throat> below all those other characters because let, let's be honest, Shano. Hector, big axe, is he going to play significantly differently from Ike? He would, he would. Throw the axe as a side special. Buddy. And it would be a boomerang. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I mean, he could pretty... pull out a hand axe, but his main weapon? Yeah. I don't think he's tossing his main weapon. Oh. <laughs> his a... main weapon would be, would be Armets. Yeah. Yeah. Mass, super massive axe. Um, like, he, he he's, his, basically, his... he's basically Ike with an axe as far as what Smash would likely do with him. Right. The, the Which way could mean he's an Echo Fighter. Maybe, maybe so. Ike has an X as well. I mean, uh, which is how I approached them with Smash Topia Wiki. It's like Ike, Urban. it's extra skill on Smash Topia Wiki, pulling out um, Grail's X. Yep, that he that he's used. Um, that's effectively how Hector would play. Yes. Um, even the way Hector moves, like his animation, the way that he battles in Fire Emblem Seven, is very ethery. Yeah. All that said, um, percentages, move, moving this train along, I don't know, four. Ooh, that's a lot lower than I was going to go. I was going to say ten. Oh, no. Well, average watch, six? Uh, no, seven. Seven. Lucky! Is it? Yeah. Watch Hector be in the game now. His, his trailer is going to be like, these guys on the fucking internet said I wouldn't be in. His trailer will start with, oh ho! <laughs> well met! <laughs> and then our meds just comes crashing in and hits somebody in the face. It, it hits Crow in the face and Crow's like, I guess I'm not getting my chance again. <laughs> I'm out oh, I again. Would have I would gleefully take Hector over Crown. <laughs> I mean, I think most Fire Emblem fans would. And the ones that wouldn't be the ones that played Awakening first. Right. Yeah. Not that Crown is bad, but you but Hector over even if Hector was just an Ike Echo, I would take that over Crown because Crown is Marf number four. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, next with the character is one from my childhood. Uh, it's Spyro the Dragon. Oh, Fuck God. yes. Love this guy. Love this game. Played him as a kid. Played with my brother. We 100% of them back then. We 100% of the Reignited Trilogy when it came out. There's gameplay on YouTube if you care to look. I streamed it. You have not streamed it. You are supposed to. I think we said we were going to try and do that in May, and uh, oops. I think today might have been the day that we we're supposed to do it. <laughs> uh, else. Sometime around then. Uh, it's written down somewhere. Near future. Near future. Issue Oops. being, I own, it on PS- I own it on PS4, and I, I, the easiest way to stream would be on Steam, and I just have not double-dipped yet. Yeah. But anyways, uh, so Spyro, he's a PS1 platformer guy. Uh, he came on the heels of Crash Bandicoot, and the two of them are 
kind of kind of sister franchises really uh they have connections like they've each had demos for each other in their games they have a crossover with um spyro orange and crash purple and they both got revivals mm-hmm. running around at the same time uh he saves he he defeats nasty nork and saves all the dragons he defeats ripto and saves the uh I'm trying to think what that world is called avalar i want to say something like that somebody will shoot me for getting that wrong and then they defeat the sorceress and save all the dragon eggs. It, it's the things he does. Like he's a small little guy. He's purple. He breathes fire and sometimes other things. Uh, ice, lightning, bubbles. That game happened. Yeah. That game sure yeah. happened. Uh, but I, I'm a little. I, I love him. He's he's one of the third party characters that I would most love to see in Smash. Sadly. I don't think the odds are good. Um, even with him and even between him and Crash, uh, Crash has always had more popularity with Japan, uh, partly because the first Spyro game was um, localized in a very poor condition, and that's kind of unfair. But what can you do? But yeah, first impressions count for a lot. They do with these games. Um, and yeah, it's unfair that they did that to to Japanese players too. Too bad. Um, but yeah, Crash is weirdly popular overseas. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's exactly it. I also personally prefer Spyro to, to Crash. There, there's a bit of an overlap where you know he, he wasn't the 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 a, a childhood hero for for me like he was for you, and he he wasn't a character that I often went back to the well. Four, and that was simply because I did not own a P. We were not a PlayStation household, and we were a Nintendo one. That was we could afford one console. That the Nintendo ones were the ones that we consistently got. So there was less Spyro to go around. I did play Enter the Dragonfly on GameCube, which was a mistake. Um, <laughs> so did, so did we. But I, we 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 had yeah. that. We had the the Game Boy Advance games. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had. Mm-hmm. I want to say we played all of the Spyro games in the original timeline up until you know the the reboot with the legend of spire and whatnot i'm pretty sure we played all of the old ones right um and i and i did i did dabble i, I played one two and three at jose's house he had, a, he had a ps1 those, those they, were, they were good yeah i just don't remember them as well as i should i own a trilogy all of that to say you hit the nail on the head though crash was the more dominant of the two characters even still to this day Spyro had Trilogy, Crash had Trilogy, and a brand new game come out, and Tag Team Racing come out, and seems to have more of a consistent future in mind for his series. And Spyro, we just don't know, yeah. even at this point. Um, so Spyro lives in Crash's shadow. We're also muddying the waters a bit, because these two characters, they who used to be Sony Titans, representative of, of PS1, PS2 era platforming stuff, they now belong to Microsoft. Well, they do. And this is where we're going to get into this fun anachronism between episodes like this and our later uh, chats about Roster Redux this season. Because Roster Redux was filmed... All of those were filmed much earlier in the season, so there's some out-of-order stuff right. happening with that. But uh, Microsoft <laughs> looks like they're going the, the multi-platform route with most, if not all, of their games. So mm-hmm. they're owned by Microsoft now, but that may not matter as far as consoles are concerned anymore. And that that's great. That's great. I'm, I'm happy that we'll be getting Crash and Spyro on, on Nintendo Sony platforms then. Or at yeah. least it looks that way so far. Um, and Microsoft, I think they know what they're doing. They're, I don't know what they're doing in the console market. They, mm-hmm. they, they may just be a publisher before long. Um, but that's a hot topic for another day. Um, but still, I mean, that there there is an issue here, though, where, you know, you're going into that same well now. Activision is the subsidiary of Microsoft. Crash and Spyro are now, now no longer just Crash and Spyro competing against each other. They're competing against the greater swath of Microsoft. Master Chief, Doom Slayer, uh, Skyrim, blah, blah, blah. so yeah, I think Crash still stands a pretty darn good chance. 
Spyro. <laughs> he's he's now buried. Yeah. He's now buried. It, even this is a damn shame. It, it it is, and you even if the whole bunch of thing was moon to Cal, I think Spyro would lose to Crash pretty easily. Uh, mm. Never in my heart. My heart will always put Spyro above Crash. Not that Crash is bad. It's just I I like the gameplay of Spyro more. I like the character more. You know, that's simple. But when it comes to thinking about things for Smash, definitely going to be Crash first. Spyro may not be ever, which is a big sad for me. But yeah. uh, I hate saying it, but I'm, I'm actually going to give Spyro a 4%. Agreed. Agreed. All right, well, third character we're going to be talking about here is another one from your childhood. So why don't you uh, tell us a bit about Tetra from The Legend of hey, Zelda, The Wind Waker. My first Zelda game that I ever played. Breath of the Wild, for me. <laughs> Not quite a childhood game, then. <laughs> no, not for me. Oh, my God. Um... A little older than you might think. I mean, it's now seven years old, which is striking. Yeah. Um, but Wind Waker, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you know, I was I was young enough to skirt through the the controversy of Wind Waker and, and you know, the Space World demo and people wanting a more realistic Zelda, which what, what a controversial take now, um, you know, how the tables have turned. You know, Wind Waker still looks like an amazing game. It's 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 a timeless art style. Twilight Princess is showing its age. It's it's too muddy. You know, yeah, yeah. So I mean, people just we, we didn't have that foresight at the time as as gamers. We're just like, yeah, this is the cutting edge. Three D is so new. It's so it's so cool. It, this looks real, even though it's clearly doesn't. And and now we're yeah. I mean, now we're kind of skirting that line in, in time for realism. Back then, it wasn't it. Anyway, um, where where is our Wind Zelda Waker, game with the realism graphics of God of War Ragnarok? Would be fucking awesome. <laughs> would be fucking awesome. Space World demo did not look like that. Nope. <laughs> Good lord. Um, and, and there's something to say about cell shady games. Wind Waker, Jet Set Radio, Okami, they all held up pretty well. They they look they look. The gameplay is another story, maybe, but they look really good. Still. Yeah, good. Um, games that focus on realistic graphics, they mm -hmm. they show their age really quickly. Games that focus more mm -hmm. on particular styles, mm -hmm. more likely to stand the test of time. Right. Yeah, and and that said, this is a game that stood the test of time for me. Um, you know, in in my heart of hearts, it's still my favorite Zelda game. Probably always will be for. The reason why other Zelda games are people's favorites and other games are because they played it early on in their lives, left a lasting impression. Um, really, we are as adults, we're, we're kind of chasing the feeling that we had from games as kids fairly constantly. Um, Wind Waker <clears throat> um, was a, was a, was a, a ma made an amazing impression on me. <clears throat> made me interested in, in the fantasy genre at large. Um, and it's it's a really charming game. So Tetra is, is the captain of her pirate crew, and you meet her very early on in the game. Uh, she's Zelda. It is revealed. Spoilers for a 21-year-old game. Oh, my. I think how we would approach it here, um, we're just talking about the character Tetra. Yeah. No, this is no, not like, Toon Zelda. Zelda. Attached to it. Right, right. <clears throat> Even in the scope of, of the game itself, if Tetra made it in, I'd be like, we don't need this. Yeah. But, uh, Zelda yeah. is in the game for like three minutes at the very end, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tetra's a great character, mostly for how removed she is from the general Zelda personality. Um, and she'd be a fun character to play as. We've talked about this in on this podcast in the past, I believe. It's a pirate. I had actually forgotten at one point that we hadn't made a move set up her yet. For some reason, like I was thinking back a couple weeks ago, <clears> looking <throat> at uh, things we've done, I was like, wait, where's where's Tetra? Did we not wait, Tetra's not on the wiki? Wait. We never made Tetra? 
What? Another what? spoiler alert. I think she's an easy fast track for for a future Zelda character. Oh yeah. If if one of us yeah. doesn't do it off podcast first. Yeah, and perhaps we we avoided it this year because we already had Captain Syrup, so we were like, oh, Ravio's unique. You know that I. You know what? That we probably did have that discussion thinking about it. Yeah, probably do. Probably did. Her chances, though, I mean, Wind Waker is one of the more evergreen Zelda titles. It's one that people constantly talk about. It's one that made its impression, as it did on me, to many people. It's a timeless inclusion in the game, many people's favorite. Um, and there have been rumors, like how supposedly the Genealogy remake has just been being sat on in hibernation by Nintendo. So has it been long rumored that Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD were getting ports to the Switch. I could easily see that happening, even by the time this episode comes out and having an official reveal. It just feels like that end-of-life thing we can yeah. do for the Switch before, before we peter out. Um, but uh, even without that future sight, you know, with the assumption that Wind Waker will be getting another release, she has a good chance. If, if there, there, there are a swath of other Zelda characters that could get in. I think that's the big competition that she has. But even then, she feels like upper rung. Yeah, those characters. I, I agree. Zelda representation in Smash. God, we had a whole episode about that. Uh, yeah. it's it's not very <laughs> good. Like I like to think the fact that each character is having their design coming from a different game mostly is good. That's that's a good start. <laughs> but it's just Link's, Link's, Zelda's, and Ganondorf is what we have right now. And to be fair, Tetra would be another Zelda. It's true. She would mm -hmm. be. Um, mm -hmm. But I do agree. I think she is one of the more likely Zelda characters that they would consider uh, for the next Smash game. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the thing that's most against her favor is the fact that Toon Link is in. I don't think it's necessarily a strong <clears throat> argument. And I also think that if we are to lose characters in the next match, which is incredibly likely, Toon Link and Young Link are probably going to be some... Not, not going to get them out of here. Right. Like I, I don't want to say first on the chopping board, because I think it's more of a case of they're going to be lower on the priority list. And right. the, you could there yeah. could be a good argument from Sakura to be like, okay, let's remove Toon Link and bring in Tetra as a Wind Waker representative, which I think would be a right. much stronger choice. Me too. Uh, I think her, her direct competitors at this point are Midna, Skull Kid, and anything from the last Zelda game. Like, what, what, whatever the fuck. They're, they're trying well, to shove down here. Not but I, I don't even the last know. Zelda game. I think she is, but right. I don't think you know Boo's happening. <laughs> God. I hate you. Know. <laughs> I don't think Teba is happening. Right. Right, right, right. Uh, okay, correcting course. Mifa or Sidon? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Urbosa, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe. In my mind and heart and all my organs, Hestu would be also considered. But probably not. Listen, I'd take Hestu over you, Toon Link. <laughs> of course, Toon Link's a clone. It's easy to pick. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Um, Young Link becoming Masks Link, though. I would I would like that to happen. That'd be that so be good. good. That'd be so yeah, good. That'd be, that would be better than Skull Kid. But let's not have that discussion. Whoops. Do ripple some feathers. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she's, she's fighting against other Zelda characters. But let's assume Sakurai is a very gamer-centric developer. We, we're learning that through Sakurai Thank God. We kind of always knew this. Um, and, and in one of his more recent episodes, he was like, I didn't have Dolby Surround Sound in Kirby Air Ride because including the Dolby Surround Sound logo at the beginning of Kirby Air Ride would have been two seconds too much for gamers to have to worry about booting up the disc every time they play. And I was like, what? That's crazy. Yeah, but that's at least the reason. Because like, like I yes. saw that there was an article about this. I didn't read it. I was like, I don't really care about why we didn't have Dolby Surround Sound. Like, I don't give a shit about Dolby Surround yeah, yeah. Sound. Yeah. But I was like, the reason is because the logo would have been too long for people to deal with the hand they load the game. Yes. I gotta be honest. Yes. That's a terrible excuse. Yes. Bad excuse or not, what I will say to him is, 
who I watches the interest in games? As a, yeah, as as a developer, you know, where he's like, at least even with these weird ideas, he's he's gain he's gamer focused. So so to say this, you know, he he was tongue in cheek about bias inclusion. He like straight out almost said, "Look, I had to do this." Yeah, a secretary all but said. I did not want to include Violet. I was yeah. told to. I tried to do something else, and I was overridden. It's like, we appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. So him him being a homie and just, like, outright saying that shit to, to his fan base, he's very aware. I would not be surprised if he scoured forums and subreddits and shit, re, re, actually reading our opinions about this stuff. He seems like that person to exist in the community under the radar. Well, um, the Japanese he, forums. Right. But there are some areas where, where you know, we, we skirt the same reality with, with, our, with our Japanese brethren. Um, one of these, I'm sure, being thoughts on Zelda. Like, it's probably universal. It's an extremely popular franchise, best-selling franchise, very underutilized in Smash. So he has to be aware of that in the next Smash. I would like to think so anyway. He has to be aware that that's high on the priority list. Right. Like, let's... The difference would just be who people want to see that character be. Because there are a good number of good possibilities. Yeah. I would love to see Tetra, and I would also love to see Midna, and so I'm kind of, um, you know, at that crossroads myself. Yeah. Um, More shoot. I... Yeah. More sh... Beetle. Yeah. Uncle Rupee. Mm-hmm. Tinkle, error. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, all that's yeah. All that said, the I will, Tetra. Yeah. Uh, God. Mm. They're high in my mind. Only diluted by other characters in the franchise. Forty-five. I was thinking forty. Wait, it's nice. it's it's high, but it's technically not. It's like. It's weird sounds like you're like, man, uh, yeah, I think this character has a good chance that we give them somebody that's like 40% chance. I was like, mm -hmm. get but it doesn't sound good, but it's like, comparatively speaking, that's really good. Yeah, and then, yeah, I mean, considering the caveats and the, and the you know, there's there's so much we can't say in just the percentage number. So I yeah. have these discussions. Next up, a character from uh, my childhood. One of the first games, first first characters I was ever introduced to, playing alongside my grandma, Kamek, from Yoshi's Island. This, oh, the best Yoshi game, most would say. Definitive, not even. Not Yoshi, I'll fucking not go there. Yoshi's Island? <laughs> no. Obviously, it's <laughs> Yoshi's Cookie. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> it's better than New York. She's out. <laughs> yeah, but Kamek yeah. is uh, it's it's just a Magic Koopa, really. If you think about it, Kamek yeah. is a named Magic Koopa. There's truthfully nothing to our awareness that Kamek can do that other Magic Koopas can't. Uh, but Kamek is known as being the caretaker of Bowser when he was a baby. Uh, maybe might be more after the same child. Like he's called Baby Bowser, but eh, child Bowser is probably more accurate toddler bowser really um kamekin falling a broom uses grab uh, geometric magic make things big in the world crazy uh there's lots of this character could do uh make him unique just flying around his broom the problem is is the yoshi franchise it, it's got its own banner in smash but it's never going to be represented by anything besides yoshi and does it need to be technically no it does not need to be. Would I love to have a character like Kamek or Baby Mario or even Poochie uh, join Yoshi as a Yoshi branded character in Smash? Absolutely. And Kamek would probably. It either be Kamek or Baby Mario that would be my choice, but even then, Baby Mario, you could combine <coughs> with Baby Luigi and represent just Mario's okay. side, or who knows what they would actually classify them as. I don't know. But I, I would. I think it would be great to have, but I don't think the, the odds of this are very good. Um, could give us a unique gameplay, though, which Sakurai likes doing that, so that's a 
mm -hmm. possibility. Yeah, I mean, funnily enough, I think one of Kamek's direct competitors is that. I mean, you have two magicians from Mario sub-franchises who, who fly on brooms. Very traditional wizard, witch type stuff. Um, who, who did you say the competitor was? Oh, Ashley. Oh, Ashley. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Kamek <clears throat> and WarioWare is, I mean, it's, it's the more prevalent franchise now, so there's perhaps that precedent. Um, it really is going. It, it really is a case of specifically going to the well and saying, "I want a Yoshi character." Yeah. If you want a Yoshi character, he has fifty-fifty chances versus Baby Mario and Baby Luigi. Yep. Blamo. They're they are both the second most important characters in the game game series besides Yoshi itself. Um, <clears throat> one could argue they are all. Equally as important as each other as as you know that that this all of them have to be there for the set pieces to be in place. Um, so so and, and he has a legacy. I'm glad that he's in Mario Party Deluxe now. Uh, Finally, he was supposed to be in 64. 64. Yeah, precisely, precisely. And <clears throat> not that this is a, a knock of it against him, but I will quickly say the Mammy convention is so interesting because he just he looks like just a regular Magic Koopa. There, there's no identifying. Great to Kamek that makes them any different from them in terms of cosmetics. And Magic Koopas are called Kamek in Japan. Yeah. It's like, what is, what? I so, don't know, does man. Does Kamek technically not actually have his own name? <laughs> like, um, <clears throat> all that said, though, I don't think it's a knock to the character. We have Piranha Plan in, for God's sake. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's low. It's, it's really low, unfortunately. Yeah. Like, I'll give him better odds than I gave Hector. I'll say, like, seven. I was going to go a little bit higher, but also okay. just basically going a bit above where I went with Hector. And I was going to say 12. Okay. What does that average out to? Uh, nine and a half. Okay. Nine and a half inches tall is probably how tall Gamak is, so it works. Probably closer to Captain Olimar, but okay. Yeah. Now this next character. Pardon me I'm surprised that we didn't talk about them before. But it's actually a really good thing we never did. This is a character from both of our childhoods. Uh I might say I, I'm not sure when you were first this character, but I know this is like with Kamek, one of the first games I was ever introduced to. I am well spoken as a huge fan of Gino yeah. from Super Mario RPG. Yeah. Uh, we, we, one of the first four building block games for me on Super Nintendo between uh, Mario RPG, Yoshi Island, Mario World, and Mario Three. Uh, what what when was Gino for you? I don't know if we talked about this. My first consoles were the Game Boy Color and Nintendo sixty four. So I, I skirted past Gino <clears throat> for a long time in my in my childhood. The, the the first experiences that I really had with Gino were were twofold. Um, you know, I, I existed on the internet at a fairly young age. Um, you know, on um, <clears throat> before Mercurius, before anything, I was a part of a part of the Spriders resource and and Pixel Tendo that era of, of the Spriders resource when it was very prevalent on, online. Um, and, you know, it was, it was around that time having older teenagers talk about their experiences with Super Mario RPG that made me curious about the character. Um, so I read up religiously on Geno, on Super Mario RPG, on every, every facet of how it works. I, I looked up gameplay, but I didn't play it until... Gosh, I may, I may think um, like Wii era, the Virtual Console. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. and it was and that technically childhood in a, in a way, more and more adolescence. But it's, there you go, it was been fun times. Yeah, I mean, I think we said like for the rules for this, like we were counting childhood as being like sixth grade and younger. I think was the rule. It right. might have might have gone up to like eighth grade and younger. I don't remember for sure. It was somewhere in that vein. Sixth grade is, is when the Wii came out for me. So it was 
probably like seven or eight that I played it. Yeah. Well, it's definitely childhood for me. Yep. Because that yep. was before school. Yeah. yeah. That's how far back I go. When our grandmas were alive. Yeah. Cheers to them. Anyways, Gino, uh, here's why I'm really glad that we never talked about him before now is because if we had talked about Gino in the previous two seasons at all for Rethrow's Chances, we would have both been like, we would love it, but he would have a bottom score. Mm -hmm. It'd be single digits. But now, Super mm -hmm. Mario RPG has been remade for Switch. It's, it's an incredible remake. They did an amazing job. The character is never more well known than he is now. His chances of being a Smash Jar have never, literally, never been higher than they are right now. Even if the next Smash game doesn't come out for another six years, which oh my god, the gap between Ultimate and then, uh, his odds would still never have been high higher for any of the Smash game. It's it's honestly incredible. We we are looking at a period of time where Gino actually has real chances. We've always wanted him. But he's always had so many other things working against him. And right now, like his biggest, the biggest thing against Gino, I think, is the fact that there's also Waluigi, who's another big fan requested Mario character. And then it's the question of like, well, is there more? Mar Do we need any more Mario characters in Smash? Because we already have a lot. Personally, it's the biggest franchise yet. Yes, you add more Mario characters. Are you yeah. crazy? Yeah. It's like people say, like, do we need more Pokemon? It's like, there's new Pokemon generations being created every four years. Yeah, add more Pokemon in the game. Come on, you can replace them. But yes, add more. Yeah. yeah. But Gino. I mean, that and the two best selling video game franchises of all time, so of course. Yeah. And to be yeah. fair, to, to be fair with Gino and the other original character of the game, Malo. Mello has more of an actual arc and story in the game. Gino truthfully doesn't. He's more the uh, the exposition character, but he's also the one that people gravitated towards. He is the cool guy. He's a wooden puppet that gets possessed by the, by a star spirit, uh, who charges Mario to go for the star pieces, which you know Mario was just going to go save Peach, and then he found the stars. Like, well, that's weird. I guess I'll hold on to this. I don't know what this is for. Gino's just like, no, you need these we're you're getting all of them or the world is screwed and he can shoot bullets and pellets out of his fingers it's like what yeah. okay <laughs> cool he's a cool yeah. ass character like is he does he have much going for him in terms of his story for him himself no truthfully not most people don't care and i'm and i'm one of those people right well, it's not like, you know, there are many other Mario RPG characters who, who are the epitome of just cool without trying, um, like Gino is. Besides maybe um, <clears throat> Bowyer or um, Flavio or Cortez. Who's the first lot. one you said? No, I couldn't, I couldn't understand no. what you said. I said Bowyer. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, that was a joke. Gino's the coolest. What a what a great uh what a great character. Um, so different for for Mario and and just the vibe of Mario in general. Um, and his, and his little dance makes me happy. His little dance whenever he wins a battle. The the um, love the level <laughs> up screen dance. Yeah, that's yes, correct. Um, yeah, we we have never we we. The Switch is truly a dream fulfillment console. Who could have believed that we would have ever gotten what we were dreaming of? Super Mario RPG, RPG remake, remake, Thousand Year thousand Door remake, door. which the just released. Door. Uh huh. Oh, oh my god. I'm playing that right after we record this episode uh, for the first time. Like, I've been oh thinking about buying it. Like, because like, I never finished the original. Yeah. But I'm also just like, man, I just. I have so. I'm trying to do so many things. It's like, do I have time to to play big RPG? I don't know if I have I time. Understand. I I get that. That's why it took me a year after buying it to play Xenoblade, and it's only because you forced me to. <laughs> if, 
<laughs> and Xenoblade X is another one that's like, I finally bought the game. I need to play this at some point. When do I going to have time to play Xenoblade X? This is a 300-hour game. That's okay. why I haven't even bothered getting a PS5 yet, even though there are finally games on that I want to play. Because it's like, that's a big investment for having a day a month to be able to play it. How soon would you buy a PS5 uh, if they announce Ghost of Tsushima 2 tomorrow? If it looks good, I'd buy it hmm? within the next year. Okay, okay. So, so if they announce Ghost of Tsushima 2 tomorrow, and let's say it releases in... December. It's a holiday release. So sometime between now and the next year, you'll you'll buy a PS5. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do they announce Ghost of Tsushima too? No, but it's been heavily. I mean, I know it's been and I don't. And I don't. Yeah. I don't agree. I don't agree that mm -hmm. it should exist. So like, I think Ghost of Tsushima should yeah. be a one and done, amazing game. We don't need to continue it. How would you even? Yeah. Unless it's in the past. Very. Very curious. I mean, we, we see the controversy that happens when we continue a beloved game with The Last of Us. So I feel like Ghost of Tsushima mm -hmm. can only have a sequel if it's either in the distant past or distant future. You can't continue Jen's story. You can't. Right. Jen becomes a time-traveling samurai and travels to the cybernetic future. Son of a bitch, I mean. <laughs> but it's also so dependent on the choice you make in the ending. So that, well, I don't. I don't think that. I don't. I don't think your proposal would be affected by that. If Jin time nice. travels in the future, I don't think you have to worry about the choice at the end of the game. I think we can bypass that. <laughs> Jin Sakai yeah. is the new DLC in <laughs> Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. There you go. There you go. Um, so Gino, percentages. How are you feeling? I feel incredibly optimistic. I'm not going to lie. My number is probably unrealistically high. But I'm sticking with the gun of of his chances never being better. Sakurai is aware of the character. He's aware of the one yeah. for it. Uh, and if... Uh, you know me costume. We got it. Yes, twice. And if <laughs> if people's... I can't think of the word I'm trying to... If, if, if people's interpretations are correct... And Sakurai himself wants the character. Debatable. I don't think he's ever actually directly said he wants Gino in. Uh, he said that he's been he's been thought about as being a playable character at least. We know that for sure. Right. I so I'm like saying Takamaru, where he's like, oh well, yeah, I want this. Anyway, I'm saying eighty percent. Wow. I said it's I... probably. I'm I'm feeling optimistic. It's. I, I, I'm going with it. It's crazy, but I'm going with it. Here's here's where I'm at. I thought that my number was high, but it's not as high as yours. Um, I don't want my boy Waluigi to be left in the dust. But I, I'll say 60%. 60? Okay. Yep. So we're coming at 70% for Gino. One of the highest ranking chances for characters we've ever given on this portion of the, of the show. And currently number one for this season. Oh, yeah. He, Waluigi has been here. dethroned by 8%. Oh, wow. Now here's the season two. This is, season, this is season five. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he was in this season. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, in a world where we're talking about the, rate their chances, where you can talk about Shoyuru at one moment and Gina the next. <laughs> Yeah. What a trip down memory lane. And then now to the Smasher Dash portion. Of I mean, today. this whole yeah. episode is a trip down memory lane. That's the theme. Yep. But yeah, now it's Smasher Dash, the uh, actual main topic here. And we are continuing the thread of childhood characters. But this time it's my childhood against Jano's childhood. <laughs> or I guess I should reverse that considering the characters are going to be reversed in the thing. It's my uh, childhood versus Xantok's childhood. And the first matchup features hey. yes. Paper Mario versus Spy Fox. Spy Fox? Spy Fox. Of the hit game Spy Fox in Dry Cereal. <laughs> What a mashup. 
<laughs> what a matchup. Yep. Now, to be fair, uh, Paper Mario would, I think, but I don't remember when the GameCube released. I think it would, I don't think, I think this goes, this is probably um, junior high years, I think, for me, when I played, because I didn't play the original N64. Uh, I've played Thousand Year Door. But Spy Fox uh, was one of the first computer games I ever played. Yeah. Majestic Entertainment. Humongous I, I always, Entertainment. Humongous Entertainment. Yeah. I always wanted to play Humongous games. I don't know if I ever did. I, I just wasn't a big computer gamer, but I was they're on Steam. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I even think they're on Switch. It's weird. Yeah, I think um, so. They were also on Wii. They had physical re Wii releases. At least some of them did. Mm-hmm. Paper Mario. Y2K, baby. Two, year 2000. I was six years old. I was mm -hmm. nine or ten. Let's see something in here. Is that correct? Yeah, I was six years old. I had to run some math. Uh, one of the first games I ever played where I had to actively read. Thank goodness I knew how by then, because a year prior, I was sitting on my grandfather's lap, um, reading a book to him, and then he would laugh at me and say, he just memorized it, he can't really read it. He said, he said what does that word say right there? And it's like, two, and I'm like, uh, dog? Anyway, enough exposition. Paper Mario, we know him in love. He's here. Uh, as far as... How this character is represented. Technically, you you have six games to pull from. Uh, you could use the Thousand Fold Arms from Origami King. You could, yeah, you could use the you could give him an ink element to his hammer aesthetic, whatever Splatoon. Woo, you yeah, you, you can um you could have him pull out a giant fan and use it as his final smash from a sticker. But why the hell would you? This Paper Mario, and I believe we're in agreement here, for no other reason but our own sanity, and hope and a hopeful turn with the Thousand Year Door being remade, is pulling from the first three games only. I, I well, think I, I think move set wise, <laughs> they would probably primarily pull from the first two games. Uh before Thousand Year Door remake, I would have probably would have sung a different tune. Because uh, mm -hmm. Nintendo, at the very least, would have been like, we want you to promote Paper Mario as he is now. But now that Thousand Year Old Remake is real, uh, I don't think that'll be a problem anymore. But I could still just see them pulling some things from the other games. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Kevin Curtis the appear in a taunt, or um, uh, a smash attack could, not like, side smash, hammer hits the mm -hmm. ground, and there's like a little splash of paint. A grab it his grab animation could be the thousand fold arms. I could see things like that, but I think the majority of the moves that would probably pull from uh, the badges and maybe partners in the first couple of games or the, uh, the transformation abilities in thousand year door, even with the paper yeah. airplane and whatnot. I think that's what they would yeah. primarily pull from. Thank maybe, <laughs> maybe a special could be the, the, I forget what it is, but like the flipping, the, the sideways. Oh yeah thing from uh, Super yeah. Paper Mario, whatever that was called. I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. Right, the 2D or 3D thing. Yeah. Um, One special I, could yeah. involve cycling through different partners for different attacks. Mm -hmm. What what a what a what a world we live in where this is reality now. Yeah. With a thousand your door. Uh, wow. Um, but yeah, Spy Fox, I that's a good dresser for Paper Mario, I feel like. I think we both have a pretty good idea of how these work in our heads. Um, what about Spy Fox, though? This is totally totally a blank slate for me. So Spy Fox um, is from a tree... There, there's technically more than three games, but there were three main games in his series. You are very much like a James Bond-esque type spy character. There's no, like, James Bond seducing all the different women in every movie. Um, thank God, this is so a <laughs> children's game. <laughs> But um, he he is Spy Fox. It's literally in the name. It's was that his real name? Probably not. Probably Technically, not. we don't actually know that it isn't. 
Um, we just know he's a spy and he's become spy fox. His favorite food is pancakes, apparently. Uh, in each game, he has a vast variety of different gadgets that he uses. Some are... Uh, the, the, the fun thing with the Humongous Entertainment games, I don't think every game does this, but a lot, a lot of the games have multiple scenarios in them. And each time you load the game, whatever, what scenarios you get will be different. So there will be some gadgets in Spy Fox that are required every time you play. There will be some gadgets that you won't need in one playthrough because you're not going to do the scenario where you have to use the suction cup cufflinks to scale alongside of a wall when there's crocodiles down beneath you waiting to eat you. And, but the, but one way that you can deal with them is by giving them drugged chicken nuggets. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Both of these things are real. Let, let me let me go through some of the gadgets in Spy okay. Box here. And I, this character, I I want to make a move set for him someday. <laughs> I have not done it yet. Because I'm mm -hmm. kind of just like, God, there's so many gadgets. And I don't really know like where I would go with some of the stuff. But um, there's a there's a laser toothbrush. You use it to cut open a steel door uh, so that you can freeze somebody who's being held above a uh, vat of piratas. There is yeah. um, so, some of the things I, I had to click on and be like, I don't remember this. Uh... Just... Night vision shoe. It's a shoe that you hold it up to your face, and it's night vision goggles. Nice. X-ray gum. You chew. I think it's. Let me. I have to open this one to get this one correctly. Uh, what does it say for the usage of it? It really. Does it? It just um, it allows you to see through beefy objects, only beefy objects. But this includes a cow, so you can look inside this cow character and look through his four stomachs to find the code for how to deactivate uh, a weapon, the the milky weapon of destruction. He he knows the code for it, but he swallowed it, and you have to find out what the fuck. Uh, yeah. He's got, you know, diving suit. Um, some, some of these I don't remember. He he has disguises with a sailor hat once. Uh, he's had a frog yeah. suit. He dressed up like a frog to go swim underwater to find yeah, the secret like base. Mario, right? nice. Swiss spy knife contains a fork, toothpick, and a pair of high chromium strength wire cutters that can cut through solid steel. The congeal peel, oh. which it's, I'm trying to see what the hell this does. It basically, it's a pill that some, something comes out of it and you are able to break through a aerosol can, basically. The third game, man. The third uh. game. It, they wanted to throw the ozone with, an aer with a giant aerosol can. This is closer to reality than I thought it would be. I mean, at one point you have to play Go Fish in order to get back a uh, ship captain's lucky charm, or he won't drive onto the ocean anymore. Mm -hmm. Sticky stun bun. It's a sticky bun. <laughs> yeah. Throw it at a crowd. Everyone within ten feet of it becomes dazed, confused, and sticky for weeks. Again, very closer to reality than we thought. Yep. Uh, spy skates. They're ice skates. But what you do is you insert a diagram of a of a skate of a ice skating technique inside a little thing on the shoes, and they will automatically make you skate that move. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Grappling Granny. It's a grappling hook the size to look like a doll. It's 
the granny's teeth are the hook. <laughs> that that's that's novel. Fingerprint Classic. replicator utensil kit. The fork gets placed on the target's plate. When the target picks up the fork, their fingerprint will appear on the spoon, which you can then use for fingerprint access. Cool. It can detect fingerprints even if the target is wearing gloves. <laughs> now, what does that? What can that do in Smash? Absolutely nothing. But it's a yeah. gadget that he has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He and has so many gadgets. He has so many, That's... and unfortunately, what I'm looking at isn't really helpful to me because I'm looking at thing. It's like here's a list of a bunch of items. Like I don't remember most of these items. Not all of these are gadgets. So it's like, ah. Mm -hmm. How do you fit all of this into one moveset? Do you go the hero route with his down special and slay? Like, here's some random shit. I don't know. Or, That's why I haven't yeah. done it yet because I don't know what what approach I want to take. Grappling uh, the Doodle Fu yeah. instruction book. He can learn Kakodoodle Fu martial arts from that. I wish Chick I could. Chicken knuckles is the uh, you you cover it in um, the secret sauce. You take it to the alligator pool. You feed it to them, and then they fall asleep. That's funny. That could be something in Smash, even as an individual item. Cheese and in safe cracker kit. You take it's you know you know the cheese and cracker snack, yeah. Mm -hmm, sure, lunchables. Let's eat it. You spread the cheese. And I'm trying to... It doesn't say... It just says that it allows the user to find the combination to a state. But it doesn't actually say, like, what it does here on the wiki. So I'm, I can't tell what it's supposed to do. But it would basically, like, reveal the, the code for the state by just, like, <laughs> spread it over it, I guess. Okay. Sounds tasty. Tasty as delicious espionage. Espionage is tasty. Let's be yeah. real. Unless it's a stealth segment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't like stealth. Depends on the game. Also, the game. there's a place called spyfoxgadgets.com. It has nothing to do with Spyfox. It's just a gadget shop where you can buy things like <laughs> a pin that has a flash drive hidden inside of it. What? 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 Okay. What? I don't. All right. What? You know, like, just like Lil John says. Okay. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot of things. Like a lot of these would not work for Smash. They just wouldn't. But, and and I would have I would have to play the games all over again to remind myself what everything does because this week is not doing the job for me. Unfortunately, I was kind of counting on it to be better than this. But the point is. There are things that you can do with them. You just have to get really creative. Right. You know what I what I what I would say is um, James Bond was once considered for Smash in the melee era. I could that would have painted a very different Smash if he was included. Man, I don't um, think he really was. But even then, there there's an inference that perhaps Sakurai has an idea of how a character like that could work. The spy uh, trap. It's a nickel. You flip the nickel. The enemies go like, ooh, nickel. They go towards it, net explodes out of it and catches them. Nice, nice. Yeah, you do that. You do that standard spy and make it, make it, make it cartoon. Make it cartoon. Whatever James Bond has up his sleeve that does X, Spy Fox equivalent. Slap it on, bam. There you go. Considering that Bond is probably the closest character reference that we have termite to, grenade you know, like, right that, it's that, a that, grenade and termites explode out of it wow well that that's terrifying actually um spy heat <laughs> it's heat in a can mm -hmm. it's like you know uh compressed air it's compressed mm -hmm. heat not a flamethrower nice. it's just heat you use it to heat up a thermometer to make a, an attendant panic so that you can sneak into a wax museum. Because <laughs> he thinks, oh no, the temperature is too high, the wax is going to die. So he leaves his post, and then you sneak in. Nice. What if his spinal smash were um, turning his foes into wax at the museum, that, and then they melt?
No. He does have many games where he his his spy car turns into things like a, a boat and a plane. Oh. And you shoot things. Nice. What are you shoot shooting with lasers. Pretty much. Okay. Nice. Could be capsaicin to Tabasco bullets. Heat them up, baby. Mm. <laughs> well, what what he, what I'm hearing here is there is far more and more than enough. So probably more than than is ever necessary, or perhaps even possible with with this character with just everything he has up his sleeve. Yeah, easily. Um, yeah, so in that in, in that regard, Paper Mario, you eat your heart out. You you will have an even match in that regard. Rocket powered origami skateboard. Yep, that is an interesting collection of words. Rust Buster. Instantly rust up metal. Oh, crap. Spy Toaster. It doesn't say what this thing does, but it's a gadget. <laughs> nice. There's a lot of random shit. I mean, making moves set for him would be difficult. And let's be real, if this was a, a question of what's more likely, Spy Fox has a no percent chance. No percent. One percent. Only, only by the rules of, of right to chance would it be a one percent. Otherwise, it'd be a no percent. Yeah. But in terms of like, who we would team. rather have? Boy, I would fucking love Spy Fox. Boy, Me I would too. fucking love it. Boy, I'd fuck Me love too. Paper Mario. Yeah, yeah, yes. I can't. Vote I also both, love Paper Mario. And what a predicament where we're here tearing our childhood dreams apart. Uh, yeah, I mean, once upon a time, I, I really. I think that there was there was a time that I imagined Freddy Fish and Spy Fox and uh, the 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 car one Pop -Pop. and uh, the yeah, and, and uh, Pablo Sanchez and uh, and the Red M and M and just you know just Michael Jordan everybody there's there's a time in my childhood where I wanted all these characters in. We're not doing therapy. No. <laughs> Don't get paid enough. <clears throat> For this show, me neither. <laughs> um, God. So, and I, and I, yeah, I, I don't know. You, you can get into this. Many listeners probably will agree with what I'm about to say. Paper Mario is the obvious answer. It's prevalent in Nintendo's history. It's, you know, it's a little more obvious on paper, <laughs> funnily enough, what you could do with them. Because Spy Fox, there, there just is so much nebulous space without being able to refer back to um, the games ad nauseum. It, it, it's difficult to source that info to make a snap decision and be like, yeah, him, obviously. But, um... I will say, from from like an interest standpoint, it's it's more evenly managed. Paper Mario is a character I've wanted for a long time. It's a character from my childhood, yada yada. Um, but Spy Fox would be undoubtedly fun. He would be unexpected. He he has equivalent move set potential as a character from an accomplished RPG series like Paper Mario. There there's a lot going on in Paper Mario's scope. He, he has his, uh, his, his special items, combat items that he uses. He has hundreds of badges. He has a gaggle of partners in every game. Uh, there, there are three other games that we hope are just an era bygone. He, ha he has at least bigger. one partner in every game. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. some of them are useless. Yeah. yeah that's... <laughs> it's Hi, true. Christy. But I... <laughs> Kirsty's actively bad. Like, it's just, just so annoying. 
There's like there's a um, hint system in the game, but it's only two times where whatever Kirsty tells you was actually fucking helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, God, sticker star, save that discussion for uh, Listano Vantano, the podcast where we talk about whatever we want to talk about, unhinged. Um, we got a taste of that in this episode, for sure. Um, but again, Spy Fox diluted down. He'd be a funnier character. He he would be. I mean, there's a, he's a parody of, of this classic spy trope, and with it, he has gummy granny, grappling granny. Let's say it's like, not gummy granny, and just all of this other shit. Like I love the idea of just having a character who's who's wacky like that while still being a, a legitimate force to to reckon with. We we just don't. We we don't. And perhaps this is because. Smash is, you know, an Eastern Lane game uh, from an Eastern company, but this is a very Western comic character. We don't have that in Smash. It would be, it would be welcome. Yeah. But this is Smasher Dash. Who are we voting for? Ugh. Who even goes first in this great tug of war to d- dictate their vote upon the other? Well, you or I? What was that? Let's let's go for you first. Okay. Um, uh, hmm. The part of me wants to say it. A part. A part of me really wants to say it. Be be contrary to my own thoughts and beliefs. But I but I do I think you know for for me personally at at the very least. Uh, Paper Mario is a character we're both attached to. Spy Fox is a character one of us is attached to. And at the end of the day, this is what it comes down to. So my vote is Paper Mario. So then the question becomes, because while I agree, Paper Mario is a top choice. The question becomes, do I want Spy Fox more than I want Paper Mario in Smash? Do 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 I do I do this? Do I do I take this and be like, yes, give give me my boy. Give, give that me, would be a theme this year to draw a tiebreaker again. Give, give me. Oh my gosh! Speaking of. Words. No, I know, I know, I know. I, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we we know we're going to. Uh, yeah. Do do I do I say give me one of my first video game characters in Smash? Do do I do this? Do I say Spy Fox or Paper Mario? You could with my really... laser toothbrush and my suction cup cufflinks mm-hmm. and and my. My spy skates, my stealth vac, my termite grenade, my my Walter Wireless, who's a little little bug that you he's a tracking bug, but he's an actual mm-hmm. bug. Ah. <laughs> you throw him into a purse and he's he feeds you intel. But he's a, yeah. he's a fun guy. Uh but no, I've seen Paper Mario, of course. It's obvious. Uh <laughs> Like no, come on! I love it to be a spy. I love it, man. But against Paper Mario, are you fucking crazy? Listen, Paper Mario <laughs> wasn't technically about Shadow. This was GameCube era for me. Well, I guess you know GameCube era for a lot of people. Um, that that's when I first met him was the GameCube years. But come on, <clears throat> come on! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm Spy Fox. I'm sorry. But nice. you, you you can't nice. beat Paper Mario in this kind of a contest. I'm, maybe mm-hmm. against Bubsy. <laughs> Too bad I didn't play that ever. <laughs> yeah. And I could have had a win. Ninja Pride Man. I wish. Anyway. But uh, before yeah. we get to our next matchup, we need to yes. reveal a tiebreaker we had in the last episode. Janet, would you kind of remind me who was in that tie? Yes, it was. Uh, as we often have this season, we we hit a draw between our our choices here in Smasher Dash. I voted for Mallow from Super Mario RPG. Mm, yes, you voted for Phosphora from Kid Icarus Uprising, and only one victor uh, remained at the end of our tiebreaker, where we asked our loving and adoring friends and family and fans, the Triple F, if you will. Um, who they would rather have. The results were clear. There there was a clear victor in this matchup. 
in a vote of 11 to 6. Ooh. Yes. Phosphora wins. Hell yeah. Hell. Um, and I, I, I alluded to this in the episode, too. I think the reason why is because while Phosphora has left a fur sleeve, technically, uh, she's a fun character, and there's something to say for characters who are more specifically realized and honed in. So, yeah, she's very lightning-focused. That works for a character. Yeah. She, she's, a, she's a great fighting-based character. So it's e- more, more easily to realize than Frog, who's a clout, actually. The end and of the it's day. a crybaby. I think that there's... Right. In my mind, and, and you know, there there's a novelty to, to having Will and Gino there, but Gino's the essential of the two. Yeah. By a significant margin. Like, it's... um. Like you, you frame it like Gino makes it into Smash, amazing, wow, dream fulfillment. Gino and Mallow are in Smash. Hey, it's pretty cool. Mallow's also there. Okay, unexpected. Mallow alone in Smash, actively angry. It's Some, mass confusion. Mass confusion. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. huh? Yeah. So as a character who plays tertiary to Gino in an already admittedly like niche area of Mario, Phosphorus is just easier to realize, I think, in, in the minds of many. Yeah. Yeah, so she she now enters uh the the win bracket, you know, with uh with Paper Mario and all the other characters who've won Smash or Dashes so far, and we'll see them again at the end of the season tournament champions. All right, but for this episode, we still have one more matchup to go through. Another <clears throat> bout of childhoods. From your corner... Wait, what? The the adventurer <laughs> from RuneScape? Yes. Yes. Holy yes. shit! A game that I believe both of us played for a good amount of time when we were younger. Some amount of time, yeah. I don't um, know if I would say a good amount of time. RuneScape for me came in the computer lab in the library at an elementary school in fifth grade. Um, my, my friend, current friend, an old friend from, from back in the day, Jose, um, you, who you met briefly from our forum experiences in, in Club Trevor, as well as in real life brief, very briefly when he used to work at Nike. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he and I gamed a lot as kids. We played Star Fox Adventures like every, I mean, Assault every weekend um, for for a good number of years um, at each other's houses. The multiplayer in that game was great. Um, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, one of the game, many games that we played our childhoods with together was RuneScape. OG RuneScape. Old school RuneScape as it's now called. Uh, the Adventurer. The adventurer is the name, this the standard name of every player character in, in RuneScape. It's the avatar that you build to play in that world and exist in that world. But who are they up against? They are up against from my side of the world. Squall Leonhardt of Final Fantasy VIII. Man. Now Squall. Is an orphan who mm-hmm. was t- taken in by what's essentially a military academy, more or less, more more of a mercenary academy, truly. Uh, and he trained in what is considered one of the most difficult weapons to use in that in that world, the gunblade. Which you might be thinking, oh shit, it's a gun and a sword. Uh, yeah, n- 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 no, it's not. It looks like it. It's got a long blade on it, like a sword. It's got uh, a, a revolver handle. It's got a little barrel and a trigger. But it doesn't shoot bullets. Pulling the trigger, yeah, it just makes the blade vibrate, which means that when you, if you do it while you're cutting things, you can do a much more vicious slash. But that's kind of all the gun blade does. Uh, Squall is the protagonist of Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, our main player character. He's kind of emotionally, I wouldn't say the word stunted, but he's had, he 
He doesn't. He he has. He struggles letting people get close to him. Uh, this was the second Final Fantasy game I ever played. I played seven first. Uh, after a friend of mine uh, showed it to me in fifth grade, and I really liked it, and I was like, I, I want, I want this game. And then I also bought uh, eight and nine all at the same time, or, or tactics. Nice. I bought, I bought three of those, and my cousin bought like another one. I don't remember who exactly got what, but eight, eight. Well, seven is great. Eight, I, I latched onto eight harder than I did the seven back then. And for a long time, it was my favorite Final Fantasy game. It's since dropped a bit in recent years. I say recent years, but it's less recent, truthfully. Um, but I still really appreciate eight and Squall as a character. Um, magic, sword, base attacks, uh, limit breaks. He's got all that. Um, he's also been a playable character in the Dissidia series, so there's attacks from those to pull from. And in Final Fantasy XIV, he's not in the game, but there is a, a tank class called the Gunbreaker, which uses uh, Squall and Lightning from Final Fantasy XIII as the basis for a lot of its animations and attacks. So, hypothetically, they could pull from uh, that game as well as source material for how Squall's uh, attacks and animations could look. Nice. Yeah, he's he's definitely one of one of the more. I don't know. He, he he kind of skirts under the radar these days as, as well as eight on on the whole. But on um, but you know the, the the idea of the gun blade, the the way he would move, it's it's one of the more interesting potential options from the swath of protagonists from Final Fantasy that. Could be realized as a playable character, um, and and we see how effective that can be in in Dissidia, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just slap that guy in Smash with with some of uh some of what you pull from pull from Dissidia and make it make it happen. Mm -hmm. I haven't made a moveset oh, no. for him yet. I I want to. He's on my radar. Obviously, pretty much all the main protagonists from Final Fantasy are most of them at least. Uh, but there's I'm not entirely sure how to do a lot of him. Uh, a friend of mine actually gave me an idea. He's like, use the draw mechanic. It's like, the draw mechanic? How to make the draw mechanic work? Oh my god, I know how to make the draw mechanic work. Which, for those that don't know, the draw mechanic in the game is how you get your magic at Final Fantasy VIII. There's no materia. Uh, there's no like dedicated black mage or white mage character. You don't learn magic naturally just by leveling up uh, like you can in Final Fantasy VI. Well, some characters can, or they leech it from Magicite. Instead, you have to equip the draw command and use it against an, an enemy. And all enemies have magic inside of them. Like, uh, if I remember correctly, one of the early enemies is the Grat, which has fire and sleep spells. So you use draw, target the Grat, and you can select if you want to get fire or sleep. And then those spells will be stored inside of your character. Each character has their own bank of spells. I think they can hold... I don't know if 100 is the right number. Uh, they, they can hold a, an amount of spells. But they can only have uh, up to 100 copies of each spell. And when then what if I if I draw out six fires, when I, can, when I use a fire, I'm now down to only five fire spells. So there's no MP system to this either. It's just how many of the spell you have, which then becomes a debate because part of the things with the game is you can equip your spells to your stats. So if you equip 100 fires to your magic stat, you start using those fires, your magic stat's going to start going down because you no longer have as much powering it up, which is a fun and complicated mechanic. But with draw and smash, something you could do is a limited form of Kirby hat. If Squall targets Mario with draw, he gains fire spells. If Squall targets, uh, let's say, who's the character that we've made a move before that I can come up with something real easy for? Uh, if Squall targets your uh, polar bear submission, or the ice climbers even, he gains uh, blizzard spells. Mm -hmm. If Squall targets Jigglypuff, he gets a sleep spell. Right. Not every character would would provide a unique spell. So, like, Mario, Luigi, Incineroar, Charizard, they would all probably provide fire. Uh, 
but that's that would be a, a thing that could be done to bring yeah. a simplified version of Kirby Hat into the game. There's 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 a lot there's a lot going for the character. I uh, I, I yeah I appreciate that. I mean, if you could do it with Kirby, this is an easier version of that. So why why the hell not? Yeah, if Kirby if Kirby was being out of Smash when they were already. 50 plus characters, we would never have gotten unique Kirby hats for every character. There's no fucking way. It would have yeah, been you like, got you get Kirby, Mario, Kirby. yeah, like, you get Ryu, you get Fighter Kirby. You get Ken, you also get Fighter Kirby. You get Little Mac, it's also Fighter Kirby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, abs- absolutely. Um, But on the other... I, I love how they, these have been framed. Like, there, there are, like... Champions of, of gaming history and the echelons of, of famous series, Paper Mario and Squall versus Spy Fox, the, the RuneScape guy. <laughs> I mean, you you kind of laugh at RuneScape guy, but RuneScape guy does actually have uh, a good amount of stuff to him as well. There are a lot of oh, skills yeah, in yeah. RuneScape, and I was I was looking through yeah. some of them earlier, and I learned that apparently because I saw one that was listening to the free to play section. It's like, wait a minute. Fletching wasn't free to play. What the fuck are you talking about? Because I could never do that, and I was free to play. It's like they added it for to free to play. It used to be members only. Nice. I was like, nice. holy shit! It's like free free to play free to play skills. Obviously, you have attack, strength, defense, ranged, prayer. Right. Right. I don't remember prayer. Prayer. Yeah. That, prayer, maybe rune, that was that. Yeah, after I played, yeah. I don't fully remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, this is that was two thousand. Oh no, I guess that was already there. Maybe not. I just probably never used it. But magic, you can cast spells, constitution, crafting, mining, smithing. I did those two a lot. Uh, yeah. Fishing, cooking, fire making, and wood cutting. Two classic ones. If a RuneScape character ever got into yeah. Smash, fire making at bare minimum is a taunt or victory yeah. pose. Bare I could, minimum. I, I could see using the tinderbox to make a campfire being a part of the special move set. I could see it. Obviously. I have an yeah. item of the tinderbox that we yeah. did uh, years yeah. ago. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Rune, rune crafting is a skill. Dungeoneering, fletching, and then on the member side of things, uh, agility, herb lore, thieving, slayer, mm-hmm. farming, construction, hunter, summoning, divination, yeah. invention. That's new to me. Uh, archaeology, necromancy. Yeah. Several of those are. Several of those were not there when I played. Me too. Me too. I don't. I don't recall raising the dead in my day. Mm-mm. I. I no, do kind of feel possible. like. I do kind of feel like they might just focus on runes and magic, though. If I was mm-hmm. to to make a guess, I feel like they might just go uh, go in on that for the specials, at least you know, mm-hmm. and then. Basic I do. I do think that things, but. I do think that Jagex as a, as a company is is blissfully aware of of you know their 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 status as a. As a free to play MMO and and what that's meant in, in the generation they came up when uh, catering to us older, you know, like not older but old on the younger end. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, people born in the nineties and eighties and two thousands. Um, you know, they 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 play well into the memes. So so the Tinder box will absolutely be there. Uh, Evil chickens, probably some, some, some stuff. You know, the the, the classic tangents that we go on in RuneScape will, will be brought into. Are there their old dances? Just all of all of that junk. Goblin armor. Who knows? Who knows? Jesus, um, goblin armor. Yeah. Uh, th- there used to be the old special events where if you <laughs> mm-hmm. mined too much or you cut down too many trees, uh, a golem or an int would spawn and start attacking you. Unfortunately, I think those are gone. I think they removed those. But mm-hmm. imagine that's the final smash. Yeah. Imagine he just he just starts cutting down trees or mining, and this golden rune pops up and just starts attacking everything around it. And RuneScape guys just like, nope, <laughs> I hide. <Bye. laughs> I'll let you all yeah. deal with this. Yeah. I I would love if if this character leaned into the mimetic stuff, like kind of like Steve a little bit, you know. Um, or it's this kind of faceless guy, you know, you could swap between different different characters and, and genders and so on. And, and armor Each all has a different look. Between. Yeah. One of them's just the Zima. And uh and you go from you go from there. But um 
you know, invoking a personality that, that you kind of have to build from the ground up. You know, I'm not always a fan of an Avatar character, but with a classic like this, I think it works. Yeah. And it's it's pretty And it's not pretty like, great to think about. And like we've recently talked about an MMO with World of Warcraft recently. Mm-hmm. Uh in World of Warcraft, like sure you can build characters, but there's also <laughs> plenty of established characters as NPCs from the lore. RuneScape, right. there are NPCs, but I don't think mm-hmm. I would pick any of them as a playable character over the adventurer in this for in this case. Right. Slap, slap them with a slap them with a fish from off the fishing rod. Catch them on fire with a campfire. Uh, you can use uh, the 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 hearth. You build have a armor building mechanic. I don't fucking know. I I probably wouldn't, but there's something you can do. Maybe um, put them put them inside of the hearth. Cook them. Um, uh, the the, the, down, the down the smash yeah. could be light in the fire underneath him, so it just like uh, burns whoever is right in front of him, knocks them up, and that's yeah. down smash. Is down campfire. Smash. That's that's awesome. Um, and, and here you have it's it's technically a jack of all trades, weapons master character. We've attached that idea to Monster Hunter in the past, among other and in, in others in this community. This could easily be one of those too. Uh, make the primary weapon an axe. There you go. There's your axe user. Yeah. Have a give them a whip, a scimitar, a mace. You know, it's there. There, there are limitless possibilities with this character as well. It's just kind of part of the territory of being a well-crafted early MMO. Yeah. Okay. Po- point and click. I mean, you know, if you if, if I went back to it now, I probably wouldn't be long for that world. There's we, a, we should it, do something for for a yeah. gaming. You and I just like for a couple yeah. hours create brand new characters in RuneScape yeah. and just. Just play for a few hours, and let's do it. Like we we won't play it for long. We won't do the whole game, but just like mm-hmm. have some fun exploring it. See how, yeah. see what's different now. Yeah. When did uh? So, so I mean, you know, there there's the guy. If I recall, you can throw rocks in RuneScape. Throw a rock at somebody. No, that's for uh, Rams the Bayul from Final Fantasy Tactics. Oh, that's uh, his move. Throw yeah, stone. Yeah, the first mm-hmm. skill that he knows. <laughs> also true of, of Marsh and Advance and any of the, and the later games, too. Um, and then there's, you know, the, the runes, they offer buffs and nerfs and protecting you from melee or range or magic, or whatever. That could be easily invoked. They're like, like Spy Fox, you know, the, the underdog character just has all of this shit that you can throw on it. There are a variety of different ways you can approach the character, and it's it's at the very least fun to think about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So so here we are again, kind of in the same boat. A a, a triple A franchise character with a defined identity. Uh, something not not easily re- realizable, but something you can realize with with the draw mechanic. Um. Gunblade for his for his uh standard special he wields a gun blade. Yes, a gun, but not <laughs> not real not not really a gun. In a sense, the essence of one inside of a bl- a giant blade. Sort of. Yeah, yeah. What's funny um, is that the gun blades of Final Fantasy fourteen actually do fire things. <laughs> Some fire bullets, others fire essentially like magic like bursts yeah. of magic fire out of them well that's cool yeah and like um he doesn't stand a chance <laughs> no he doesn't although he does have a gun because that actually actually no wait no is ramji i don't think ramji is magic is he fuck <laughs> how he attacks he's a mm-hmm. shithead and I hate him <laughs> I just happened to join one of your streams it's just no not right not to... Balthry. I'm talking about another character okay <laughs> oh, I don't think he is uh, but anyways uh, like Squall <laughs> He's got, you know, he can do any of the magic from 8, much like how Cloud would. I don't know... Like, they gave Cloud... 
Cloud doesn't use magic in Smash. In Dissidia, mm-hmm. they gave him the fire spell. Squall, they let use uh, essentially what they call like bullet versions, like fire, ice, and thunder. We can use all mm-hmm. three of them, but they're like the fight off is like multiple projectiles all at once. Uh, if they were right. to give just give Squall one element in particular, I kind of think they would give him ice, because Squall um, at the start of the game he starts out with Shiva and Quetzalcoatl, which is the ice and electric uh, summons in the game, and then you basically mm-hmm. have to go subdue Ifrit as your first uh, mission, and he reacts to you having Shiva. Uh, mm-hmm. I think you could go either ice or electric. I would probably give him ice of the two. If only because it's oh. a rarer element in Smash than Electric yeah. is. No, that um, that excites me about the about the character. Right, but even then, that like means. Cloud's special moves, they're literally just his limit breaks. It's mm-hmm. ju- it's just the it's just uh, Braver Cross Slash. Um, I can't remember the other two off the top of my head, uh, but Squall they could do uh, Faded Circle, which is a AOE explosion around him. Or kind of like an AOE projector, depending on what game you're really looking at. Uh, Rough Divide uh, is something I'm sorting from, and there's like a, a beam that gets shut out. Uh, blasting Zone. Oh, no, that's Blasting Zone. I'm thinking of that shoots out the beam. Um, what the hell is. Is Rough Divide like a an upwards laser? It might be. I'm trying to, I'm trying to look at multiple pages, see like what some of the things look like. But. Right. Okay, rough, rough divide into Cydia is a dash attack. <clears throat> he jumps up and he he charges forwards at you. It's like okay, uh, blasting zone. You slam it down and you create pillars of energy that jut up to the air. Uh, but the, his main one is Rinso, which is basically just a bunch of hits, uh, rapid right. slashes. Which then Lionheart is that, but also with explosions. Lionheart mm-hmm. would end up being the final smash, much like Cloud's Omni Slash. Right. Cool. Cool. I like the idea. I like the idea. Um, God. What do we do? What What do we get ourselves into with these matchups? <laughs> I mean. Do you have anything There's else you want to say about them both? Like we covered a lot of what they can do. RuneScape guy has you can go very meaty with a lot of his stuff, uh, but then you also mm-hmm. can focus hardcore on the magic. There's a lot of spells that he can use with the rune stones. There are absolutely. I, I feel um, like if you study. only involve one spell, you're probably going to go with uh, the air one because that's like the most basic that everybody knows. Yeah. Like the, like the level one spell essentially. The thing that looks like you're shooting one of Spider-Man's webs at. <laughs> kind of. I mean, yeah. Yeah, little, little ball. That's what I used to think, anyway. Um, it's a little air blast. Yeah. yeah. Just like Aang or Ong, as some say. Mm, nobody intelligent does. <laughs> uh, and then Squall, I think they would focus mostly on the gun grade. Maybe a lot of magic if they... Because, like, Rinzo Koki and Lionheart. They had the very same, right. but Final Smash standard, you know, that, that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, draw for him. Uh, mm-hmm. And they can go with a bunch of different magics. I don't know whether you focus on ice or you go with some of the more unique and weird spells like Meltdown. I'm not sure the mm-hmm. best way to use Meltdown and Smash. I guess it would basically be the Inkling mechanic. But right. there's a lot. For the... Yeah, for for the adventure, I mean, if you really wanted to be ambitious, you could go the hero route here. You can have the rune crafting be a down special or an extra skill. Have a number of, of different spells available through through that. Could could be uh, something that legitimizes the the idea of it in a in like purely the fighting sense. Like, oh, look at all all this stuff that, that's available off the, off the, at the tip of your fingers and. Kind of overwhelming. There's there's a lot there. Yeah. There, there's a lot that they can do with it. Would, there would there would be an element of just like randomness attached to the character, which is why I think you go Zany with with the taunts. You, you do the different the, 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 the all the different dances and shit from from the game. Throw them in there. 
make it make it just so uncanny just make it so bizarre just emphasize that and, and i think that's that's where you find just like the the, the appeal of, of the character it's uh all the all this stuff packed into one but it's also just really kind of funny yeah call back um god okay so so where i'm at is you you have a character who is a pronounced identity who does a specific thing who's from a major series it's easy to kind of re visualize how that will work and it's appealing because that's the kind of character i like to play as in, in smash but you know the more or less sword wielding user with with some range stuff um <clears throat> and then you have something totally off the wall yeah it, it could be a sword a sword user but no i mean if you're if you're pulling that out of your out of thin air like oh it's runescape like what the hell uh, you, you go hard into the the uniqueness of, of that era and that franchise so it's going to be a very ambitious odd choice yeah uh, again this is the makeup we, we've kind of got ourselves into the makeup of what we did in the first matchup it's spy fox and paper mario and but it's fantasy boys <laughs> I mean, yeah. Although, yeah. RuneScape is more classic Magic and Dragons fantasy. There's Magic and Dragons in Final Fantasy VIII, but it's a lot more... There's more tech. You uh, you live in a big tech school, and uh, spoiler alert, uh, at one point it flies. You, wow. There's also a spaceship, and you go into space. Oh, gosh. Not the first Final yeah, Fantasy not... in space. That was four. Mm-hmm. You don't go to the moon this time, though. Although the moon is involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nine is nine is where they went back into kind of medieval world building. I mean, it was kind of. uh, up until like the first five Final Fantasy were all more classic fantasy. Yeah, Six I mean, got steampunk. Seven got industrial. Eight was getting yeah. more future. Nine it's like, all right, we're coming back down. Ten <laughs> continued that. Eleven probably did. Twelve. Then thirteen started picking up tech again, mm -hmm. and then fifteen is modern tech, kind of with gas stations and cars. But sixteen mm -hmm. is back to being more medieval. The world of sixteen is really appealing to me. It's the gameplay that might throw me off. Yeah, I'm not. Um, I'm not great at action games. You've seen me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll we'll see, but. I, think, I kind of think we're, we're equipped with what we need to make a choice. How about B? Yeah. Okay. What will it be, I'll talk? Squall. It's just Squall. I, I think there are fun things you can do with the RuneScape character, but there's no way I'm voting in Squall here. It's yeah. my guy. He would be really fun to play. I think, like, I enjoy playing Cloud and Smash. Uh, when when I started yeah. playing Dissidia, yeah. Squall was the first character that I graduated that I wanted to play as. I only switched off of him when I was having a better time playing another character just in that game's gameplay. I went to Onion Knight. Actually, he became my new main, uh, yeah. which surprised me. But Squall, I've got an affinity for him. I got to go with Squall. That's that's kind of what it comes down to, mostly, isn't it? Like, if, if there's a legitimate, if, if, you know, like Spy Fox was a hard sell, perhaps versus Paper Mario, but uh, and again, like we're we're hitting that wall again. It's more of like a what the hell character versus like a really legitimate, great choice that that seems like it would be very feasible for Smash to do. Um, Paper, I mean Paper Mario. I mean that's that's upper echelon. Yeah, so that, that's very likely to happen. Squall, I mean, he has his competition. But yeah, it, if I was if I was picking between Final Fantasy characters, Squall would not be my first choice. I don't know who would be, honestly, because <laughs> it's really hard to mm -hmm. say what is the best direction to go to after Cloud. Uh, I would not pick Sephiroth. <laughs> I would not pick Ultimecia. <laughs> uh, but here, easily, it's for me. This is this is so Squall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. 
So again, easy choice, like it's there, feasible, everything is there. There's many a reason to just do Squall. Uh, again, like we did Big Mario. Uh, my holdup is I don't have the attachment to the character. I've never played eight. I don't know much about it. Um, my only experiences with Squall directly play, playing as him were in the first city again. If, if I recall, so so it's less of a less of an attachment. I did enjoy the character in Dissidia. I, I enjoy the character from what I've heard from you, what I've read about, you know, briefly and and so on. He needs therapy. He yeah. needs a little bit of therapy. Right, but you know, I, I'm less versed in Final Fantasy. I've played less games in the series. I mean, you played damn near every one uh, of the mainline games. I've played right. most of them. I have not completed them all but you know. whereas I, I mean i played the first six yeah I've, I've played all the all the early nintendo console ones um and then you know I, again i didn't have a playstation so it, it, it veered off and uh but you know obviously the legacy of seven is is apparent i've played nine and really enjoy nine now Eight is where I, I just don't know too much. So so do I let logic guide me, or do I let the memories of Lumbridge and Falador guide my way? Ar- ironically, I didn't finish eight. <laughs> I got the right. furthest I got because I was. It's a classic tale of memory card issues. The furthest mm-hmm. I got was on uh, PSP. I got to the final boss. I got to, like, the second or third phase of the final boss fight. Beat it. Final attack comes in. Wipes my party. And I was upset. <laughs> I put the game oh down. Gosh. I did not pick up the PSP for a couple weeks. And when I did, the screen was no longer working. Oh. <laughs> and I haven't, I haven't... I haven't... I've technically have played eight since. But I didn't go really past the intro. <laughs> I was just like, mm-hmm. I just want a feel good moment. Let's let's do the beginning of eight, and then I was like, okay, I had my feel good moment. I closed the game. <laughs> I want eventually. I want to record it for YouTube, though. I want to, I want to actually finish the fucking game. Yeah, yeah ab- absolutely. So so we have had one, two, three. Are you four, counting tiebreakers? Five. No, we've we've had five proper smasher dashes. Six, including the world of Smashcraft Improv One with Gabe. Of the six, four have had tiebreakers. Jesus Christ. Four have had tiebreakers. Adal versus Masquerada. Noah and Lynn and Lip and Bomberman from that episode were tiebreakers. Duster and Ninevolt just clearly won. That was our that was our reprieve. But then Swayzo versus Ori was a tiebreaker. Phosphor versus Mallow was a tiebreaker. We've had so many tiebreakers this season. So that's factoring in here, too. Do I want to go for the chaos and just continue the tiebreakers or just go for the logical answer of this ball? The, the, what sucks um, for me is I can't tell which direction this is leading. I don't know yeah. what he's building up to. Yeah. Well. You're going for the tiebreaker. God damn it! My vote for the sanctity of my childhood memory is... The adventure from RuneScape. I'm upset. So we're bringing this to a tie, baby. I am illogically <laughs> upset, but I am upset. I'm tired of the tiebreakers. <laughs> I'm tired of it. Do we need to bring a guest on for every Smash Your Dash episode it's, from now on? It's so engaging. Idea. Just think of all the people that love being a part of this show and having their voice voting. It's a democracy. It's a, it's supposed to Is be a Is that democracy. how it works? No. Yeah, I guess so. I don't think that's how it works. I think you just message people. It's like, hey, uh, we had a Tigan. Please help. And then you force them to vote. And they're just like, I don't know, this one, I guess. They look cool. Hey, no, no that, that's, you know, we we, uh, we do message our personal friends. Yeah, but uh, there is a public vote. There, there is a public vote. I, I post them. The damn thing on Instagram, and people just are like, "Well, yeah, bam, voted." Though you've done it like twice, I've done it far more than twice. I've, I've only done, seen I've it, it twice. I've done it as well. Don't use Instagram. 
That's true. I don't. <laughs> you probably don't even know what everyone here wants lunch means. No, I don't. Perhaps you soon will, now that I've mentioned it. I uh, but doubt it. It would require you to go on Instagram. <laughs> I don't feel like I should. <laughs> you would immediately know if you did. Okay, well, that's how we end it with uh, with chaos, the chaotic vote. So now, please let us know in the comments of the YouTube video. Yes, audio listeners, we have a YouTube channel. You can see our beautiful faces on it, our beautiful backdrops. There's Smash Brothers ornamentation from, from beautiful posters on both of our walls. It's a treat to behold. So we, we welcome you to the YouTube page or whatever. Just, just email us, supercastbrothers at yahoo.com, et cetera, et cetera. There, there are a number of ways to do so. We will mention all of them in the description of this episode. Jono will apparently post the matchup of the tiebreaker on Instagram the day of this episode releasing. Yes, which is June 15th. On, on this day, on this day of June 15th, you, you will understand your duty hmm. in this life. Hmm. Yes. We'll see. Yes. We'll see. So in the meantime, we, we should probably go. In the meantime, language. this episode is done. Next episode of Supercast for this. Uh, well, first of all, next week we are finally getting back into roster redux. Uh, we're hitting the brawl area, Bra ball area, the brawl era with Smash Brothers on the Wii. What characters are going to be adding this time? Who is our guest, and what choices are they going to make? Well, I remember a few of them. Now that I'm looking and seeing who that guest was, like, oh yeah, <laughs> they did this character, and oh, oh that yeah, was an interesting Shano one. did That's that right. character. Oh boy, hmm. an interesting one for many reasons. Hmm. Uh, and I got yeah. upset. Probably, I probably got upset. This is a good bet. Uh, but then the episode after that, back to a, a proper episode. It's going to be an odd uh, topic, as is the case. And this one is going to be a. I, I feel like I said a bit different a few times describing odd on, on topics in some of the episode season. But this one is going to be. You, you know how when you were in elementary school. Sometimes the teacher would be like, all right, guys, we're going to watch a movie in today's class. That's basically yeah. that's basically the next on topic episode is we're going to essentially be watching a ha having a movie day, more or less. You know what one of my childhood memories regarding movie day at school was? I remember this clearly. We had a uh, like an island themed party at, in the auditorium at my elementary school. And the kids were tasked with voting for the movie we were going to watch on the projector screen in the gym. It was between Lilo and Stitch and Mary Poppins, and Mary Poppins won. And we were very confused and wanted to know, why were we watching Mary Poppins in uh, an island-themed party? I'm also very, I also have a hard time buying that elementary school kids over yeah. would be voting for Mary Poppins, the movie they want to watch, over Lilo and Stitch. I have a very hard time... Imagining that. Yeah. Maybe like maybe the, the poll was rigged. I, I feel yeah. like the poll was rigged and the teachers just chose what they wanted. Right. Right. Next step, when we get into that other podcast where we just talk about whatever we want, we'll investigate. I don't think we will. But I'm going to end things here because we are actually over two hours a little bit. So, wow. uh... See you all the next one, everyone. Bye. Good day.